Welcome back. Welcome back. I shouldn't say the same thing. What do I repeat you for? It's just like a parrot, mate. I am like a parrot. Welcome to Johnny and Squawky present TGS Air. Um, today we've got some cool stuff for you. We've got this gun to review. Beautiful. We've got an old gun to go and shoot. I promise we'll go and shoot something a little bit better in episode three. We'll build up to it. We'll build, we'll take our time. Yeah. And we've got a couple of sweet bits of gear to share with you because well, why not? But first, a beautiful viral. <laughs> Here we have it, the HW98 from Warrock. This is a laminate version, which is, I think, quite probably the most expensive brake barrel springer on the market at the moment. But I can see why. I can see why it's the most expensive. It's probably one of the best looking. I'd... And probably one of the best performing. Yeah. And I know the price of this gun, and I wouldn't be against paying it. So, in terms of money, it's 640 quid, so it is probably... It's up there. It's up there for the Springers, yeah. It, it costs more now than an entry-level PCP package. Yeah. That is entry-level and this is sublime. Yeah, I mean, you're paying... This is very much, I wouldn't say top of the bottom. So, I think there's a room for a rifle like this. A lot of people go out and buy themselves a PCP now, straight away. This is the first, yeah, without learning the basics of a Springer. There's a, there's a beautiful simplicity to it, isn't there? My first rifle was a Springer, and you learn so much with that gun. So many of the field crafts that, and getting better at your accuracy, rather than just going straight to a PCP, which is very forgiving. A Springer is not as forgiving, forgiving as a PCP. And to be fair, you're used to it with the Super 10, turning up in your rifle being completely empty. Yeah, completely. So it's quite, <laughs> there's a nice seat to it. Uh, so what do you get? Uh, adjustable pad? Adjustable comb, grey laminate stock, stippled effect. It is beautiful. It's nice actually because some of the planar ones, you can't get the, the cheek pieces are always too low on the springers. But always. Always. But you've got that, that chance to just raise it up and adjust it to you just to make it fit better. Well, suddenly you can actually capitalise on the quality of the gun by being as accurate as possible. Exactly. Which is, it would be nice, they might even make spaces for it, I don't know. If they don't make spaces, they should definitely make spaces. Make spaces to, yeah, to make the length of pull bigger for the, the lanky gent out there. Yeah, like because us. it's, what, 14 odd inches. It's not yeah, massive. Yeah, 13 and a half, 14 inches. It's not that long. But it's nice as well on this stock having the, the, the stipple grip. It's very nice. Especially in being out in the wet. Because some of the beach stocks are, there is no checkering on them. You might get a little bit. Yeah, and even the, the laser checkering on a beach stock doesn't provide the best grip. Not no, really. not at all. Whereas this is this is something else. This is something special. Mm. It just looks nice. It, and it, it genuinely is. I think so. It's a twenty-five millimeter piston, I believe, in one of these, and it comes with a piston sleeve, and it's essentially got a lot of tuning kit in it, apart from a top hat before you start. So that I shot one of these when they first came out because I couldn't help myself. A right. customer, a customer came in and got one, and. I was like, do you want it zeroed? He goes, oh yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, I'm taking it. Well, I think I've ever been happier. Oh, I went and put about, <laughs> put about 100 shots in it. <laughs> but it's so... But it was sighted in when he got it. Oh, it was epic. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. worn in. Uh, worn yeah. in, which yeah. is important, obviously. It is for important with the Springer. People mm. don't, don't realise that. Well, the 98 shoots very, very well anyway, as does the 95 being fairly similar guns. Yeah, fairly, yeah, fairly and, similar. And to mix then your shrouded weighted barrel with a silencer with the heavyweight laminate stock, mate, this is by far the best out of the box Springer I've shot in a very long time. And that, it competes with underleavers like the 98, the TX200, which is in, good. Very good. I'm yet to shoot the 98, but I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to shoot one. And that's the, the, the Virox's own moderator it, as well. It is. Which is? Very good. Legendary. A legendary. Record trigger, legend, it's just legendary gun. Two stage adjustable, <sighs> beautiful. Even if you're not happy with the, with the crispness, you can adjust it. If you know what you're doing as I well. I feel like there's gonna be a phone call to Virox and see if we can get one that we can actually go out and play with extensively. Definitely, I think it needs to happen. I mean, especially the, the moderator's gotta be good if it can tame the crack of a Springer. You're always going to get more of a crack than you are from a PCP. It is a noisy-ish gun, yeah. but it's it's not bad. No. It's not bad. Again, 
generally when they see their mate die, birds fly off. Um, Whether you're I'm, shooting them with a PCP yeah, or a Springer. I've exactly. never found rats to care too much about noise. No, no, they're, they're normally too busy eating their friend. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd eat you if you died. Yeah, well, there's not a lot of meat, but carry on. <laughs> this stock will fit 95 actions. So if you were to know, so you could, and the 85 action, 85, but no, that's a common gun in the UK. So you can get an open sight gun to fit in there if you really, really wanted. Really wanted. But I, I just don't, what's the point? No, I mean, most people are going to put a scope on it straight yeah. away, aren't they? I was going to say, really it's, it's a big enough ask there's... for people to move to a Springer over <laughs> yeah, a pre-charged yeah. night, trying to convince someone or... to take an open sighter out shooting for 618 quid is um, a not, big ask. Not look at somebody moving over from a PCP to a Springer, but looking to start out but wanting the best yeah. and learning the trade with the Springer and moving on to the PCP. I mean, which was always the way and, that, and it's, it, uh, over time it's, it's been PCPs forgotten. PCPs got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Like you can buy a Gamo Fox 500 quid with everything. Look at the Stoger XM. Yeah, unbelievable. 300 quid with what you get for it. And you buy a pump for 120 quid. There you go. I you, mean, you're the, in. Yeah. Easy. And people are going to pick them up. Yeah. But I think there's, there's something classy, tasteful. Classy, to, uh, yeah. And if you're a proper shooter, mm. you're gonna want one of these in your cabinet. You're in not your room. gonna give a Stoger XM1 to your kids. You're not gonna when pass you it. die. No. This will be in your family forever. Forever. Yeah. This will literally last forever. Yeah. Uh, beyond the point where laminate is fashionable, I expect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And anyway. if you have more than one kid, they're going to be fighting for this, not fighting for the Stoger. No, this is it, right. So. Perfect. There you go. Old, old but gold. Old but gold. Escape Suburbia's own motto. <laughs> this week's old gun is a Daisy 1894 BB gun repeater. What a thing of beauty. For those of you who are interested in modern air guns, we will get to those. One day. There's so much fun that can be had with a gun like this. Uh, so these guns, I mean, they stopped making them in the 80s, started making them in the 60s. So this is not a young gun by any means. Nowadays, the equivalent, I suppose, would be the Umarex with the, that's got bloody fake bullets you fake put in bullets, the side. Yeah, like, but pe people are still making them. People are still buying this model. It's very popular. I it's, bet you nearly everyone in America had one as a kid. A bit like a Red Rider. Everyone had a Red Rider, even yeah. here. Yeah. You still get them. They're quite cool. We might look at a Red Rider. Anyway, so the 1894. It's, it's a fairly simple thing. It, it actually operates off of the lever. It comes with an adjustable rear sight and a really nice grade plastic stock. Beautiful. Loads, BBs through the side port. You push that lever forward, push your BBs in and the BBs roll down the tube, close the port, let the spring go, and you start racking them out. Racking them off, one by one. I believe this gun is faulty. Because it doesn't push the hammer back. Are we bothered? No. Should we just go and shoot it? I think so. I think after the Daisy pistol competition last week, this is going to... I mean, you're a rifle man. So Am you, I? You've got this in the bag. I'm I've not got, really a man of anything. Like, well, I'm a man of utter incompetence. That's why we're I think friends. you've got this. We have that in common. <laughs> got, yeah, we are both incompetent. I'm looking forward to shooting it. I don't know what we're going to shoot at yet. I don't know what sort of challenge we're going to do, but we're going to have a shoot off for sure. Uh, I think, given that it's lever action, timing has yeah. to be important. Okay. Speed and accuracy. Speed, accuracy, and timing. And extra points for assless leather traps. Mm, I left mine in the car. The uh, other car. Maybe next time? Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Before we start this segment, we should probably pose a question to you of, what should we call the segment where we just look at stuff that's not guns? We've got to come up with a name. Something decent because we seem to be struggling. The not guns and stuff bit. Yeah. It's a bit of a mouthful. But we're gonna start off with this. This is a knife. We looked at a knife last week. We'll look at a knife this week. This, is, however, is made by Marmaduke Creations, who I think it's safe to say is probably the biggest perfectionist in knife making in the UK at the moment. 100%, I've never met anyone more of a perfectionist than Mark, ever. The difference between a Marmaduke knife and a non-Marmaduke knife is Absolutely nothing, but absolutely everything. Everything. Attention to detail. So it's very easy to make a custom knife. No, it's not. No, that's an unfair thing to say. <laughs> no, no, no. It is relatively simple to make a custom knife. To get it 90% of the way into being a very good and usable tool is 
a process that does not take a vast quantity of time. Yeah, I'd agree. However, taking it from a tool into the finished product takes 10 times longer. And I say finished product, I mean something like this. There is not a single blemish on this knife or any of Marmaduke's knives I've ever seen, to be fair. He hand sands, hand sands all of these knives to 1200 grit minimum. Yeah, hours and hours and hours of craftsmanship and work goes into every single knife. You think this is like a 30 hour knife here? But that warrants the price of them because you're paying for that, that, that attention to detail. You're paying for, for how much time he's put into it. The craftsmanship, they are just stunning. L literal sweat and tears of somebody sat there. Attention to detail, flat sanding, flat sanding. Yeah. It's not a knife for somebody who doesn't appreciate another man's time, but this is a significant chunk of another man's life in my hands. Oh, completely. And if you're that sort of person that's going to be using one of these knives for hunting, um, stalking, whatever you're going on, it, it's an investment and it's something that, that will literally last for well, as long as you're not too... As long as you're not me. As long, I, yeah, I've, yeah. I've misplaced my Marmaduke knife recently. I'm hoping to f it'll turn up. In a field somewhere covered in rust. Oh, no. Hopefully no, not. No, no, because he made mine out of a completely rust-free steel. Oh, there you go. Because he, 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 he knows what you're like. Yeah, yeah. he yeah, knows yeah, that yeah, I wouldn't definitely. clean it or look after it in the slightest yeah. because I am a bad boy. Yeah. However... Um, I mean, that's enough of Marmaduke at the moment, but to be fair, the best thing I've ever got is a Marmaduke kitchen knife, but I'll talk about that in another show at some point. Yeah, because I'm in talks I, with him as well about I, having the same made. I use a kitchen knife every single day, yep. and I use a hunting knife once or twice a week. Yeah, yeah, it, war it warrants the investment, Yeah, 100%. It brings me joy on a daily basis more than the usage part. Yeah. So it makes more oh, yeah. sense for me to invest in that than a hunting knife. And I'm never going to lose a kitchen knife because it's no. going to stay within my kitchen, which is the size of, is smaller than this part of the studio. <laughs> yeah, you're um, not going to lose it. Next. What have we got next? What are we doing next? Oh. Oh, shall we? Yeah. Shall we? Thermal and air gunning is always a strange thing, isn't it? It's become extremely popular. We've gone through night vision, add-on night visions, pods, night vision scopes. And now we're in the realms of people in using the realms thermal. Of thermal. But, because whilst we can. Yeah, whilst we can. But thermal is normally incredibly expensive and certain companies are sort of creating cheaper options. Yeah, uh, there's a big issue with cheap thermal is it's really not as good. Yeah. It's, it's a really nice incremental market. So literally the more you pay, the better they get. The, well, yeah, but the same with anything. Not entirely, because you can buy a half decent air gun for 120 quid. Yeah, good point. Yeah, if you're buying and it will do hand. a similar job, similar. Yeah, it'll do let's say sixty percent of the job of that Air Ranger, yeah. which let's say is basically one of the best air guns out there. Yeah, but that Air Ranger, you know, is going to cost you over a thousand pound. Oh yeah, of course. But if you're into your air gunning and you're shooting rats at 25, 30 yards, you're not going to be trying to spot them out at four, five hundred. No, so you don't need thermal. much more. This is a Hick Vision Vulcan 6mm. It's done on a 17 micron sensor, I believe, with a 6mm lens. So mm. that means you have a very wide field of view yep. with quite a low powered sensor, but it's 500 quid. It's not like as important as with deer stalking where you will want to identify what it is with foxing to identify what it is at five or 600 yards, potentially. No, if you're looking at a, you know, in a grain barn at 35, 40 yards, yeah, or, or pigeons. Pigeons up in, in the roof barn. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah feral can, pigeons. In the dark, you just go, there's one, yeah. rifle on it, switch your night vision on. Save strafing with a gun or owning a separate spotter. And to be honest, once you've used thermal, it's really hard not to have thermal in your life. Yeah, I haven't got into the market as much yet. But I can imagine, I can imagine. I won't send you mine, unfortunately. No, no. I'm attached to it. Yeah, I'm sure I'll find it left somewhere one day. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll be able to take it. But I'd be interested to see how this would do on the night set, the night out ratting. Cool. We will be going ratting soon. We will. I'm looking forward to it. We've got to decide what to take, what to use. But I think I'd like to it's give one of these a try. Not to be too encumbered. So I've got a. It's a you don't really want to be taking 18,000 bits of gear or else you're no. like, oh, there's one click, clack, clop, and by the time you get your rifle on it. Normally just the rifle, the pad. And a good IR torch yeah. is all I've used. Well, you can drop your IR. Well, the thing is, is with the pod, is you don't want to be strafing with the rifle, and then you have to take it off and put it on. Is that we should wear one of these or come in? This is it. Perfectly. No different to if you're stalking. There's one. 
bino, rifle, bang. Bang, or, exactly. Or maybe not even the binos. But it's, it, I see no reason why you shouldn't want to have one of these as a really cheap entry-level thing. And they are getting cheaper, which yeah. is great. Well, like you say, you don't want to be strafing around with your rifle all night with your pad on the back. What have we got next? Oh. Now, this is the final thing we're going to have a quick look at today. And to be fair, it's, it's just a bino harness. Yep. Um, they really aren't that new or exciting, although we don't use them a great deal in this country because, well. We should, we should use them more. Oh, my handy. thing is I don't even use mine for binos. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and I understand like you can get like pouches and zip bits and pockets. Yeah. But I use mine for my thermal and my parge unit when I'm out with the air gun or with a with well, rifle because- It's probably functional. You have it on your chest, and instead of having to fish around in pockets, you literally fold that back and you can just... Everything's right in front of you. Small movements, right? Yeah. It's about, yeah, it's about making things easy. And it, it's probably the best bit of real harder. estate when you're shooting, because you're not having to make big movements. Yeah. You can just drop it it's and drop it you in. Know it's right whack. in front of you. And then you can take that all out and put your, your binos in. Uh, which so, is yeah, cool. I, I don't keep all of my stuff in the glove box of my car in one of these. No, no, no. I'll be flipping in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's a, just a handy place to keep stuff on a really nice bit of real estate, you can clip your knife to the side and actually all of a sudden you've gone from having all of your stuff strewn everywhere to just being able to clip just this on, on, on top of anything go out. Yeah, and you're just ready to go. Everything's in there and you're done. What's the, what's the retail on these then? Uh, funny, you can buy bino harnesses from anything from about 30 quid upwards to yeah. hundreds. Hundreds. The better ones are better. Like all good gear is, yeah. is better, but it's not like that where if you pay twice as much, it's twice as good. With these, even the cheapest bino harness will do the job. Do the job, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Won't last as long, won't be nicely as made, and potentially might include child slave labour. Even better. Even better. Cheaper. Cheaper. All right, guns. I fear this gun's not gonna be the most accurate. I don't think it is. It's gonna be fun. It will be fun. I feel like we should add a bit of Virarch into the mix. This is a HTV 30. Old school. Bring it uh, back to the old school. It's only, it's only got three years old. It just looks old. It just looks it's old. It's had a very hard life. <laughs> I was going to say, it's had a very uh, hard life. So that one actually, I had that in the shooting range when I had it. Um, that gun has shot a lot of ammo. And was one of the only guns to have survived the range, which is interesting. Don't know what it says um, a lot for a viral. I wonder if we'll do a whole segment on what guns survived elongated use by morons. <laughs> morons being a harsh term. Uh, just not complete novices who had no respect for the gear. Yeah, okay. um, we use that term. And many, many thousands of pellets. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to add this into the mix. I think like some kind of multi-gun competition is is fairer. I think it is fairer for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to call this the John Wayne Escaping Suburbia Run. Right, okay. I'm up for that. What we do is you pick this rifle up for the longer shot. That would yeah. be about 20 yards. Yeah. Like the, the, yeah. Uh, and we take two shots at two targets. That means so. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Two shots, two um, targets. Then move in. Out of, and there'll be a bull, or just a standard bull target. So we can, you'll get like a test of zero one and then a kill shot. A kill shot. Yeah. Okay. So okay. at least you guarantee at least one 10 bull. One, at least one. And then you put that rifle down safely. And then we run, we mount the, the, the horse, the tree horse. The tree horse. Uh, and whilst sat up on your horse, with the underlever, shoot three targets. Okay, engage three targets with that. Timed. Timed. And you shoot three this bullets, as many times as you like until you hit the three targets. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take that actually. Yeah. I know, because. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can fill that one up. But they're not going to be big shot. You know, I'm thinking like a couple of, like, line some blocks of wood up. Like, yeah. Pew, pew, pew. Hit those. Then it's a. Score times time scenario. Okay, I, I'm, I'm up for this challenge. There's a, a three second penalty for every score on the target under the 10 ball. Who's your money on? Who is your money on for this target? I, I reckon it's you this time. It's, you're a rifle man. You're I'm really not. I, where has that come from? I'm not. What is this? Well, you're not a pistol shooter. I'm not. So you, okay. Wait, it should who, be known who by makes now. an but... air rifle shotgun? Who Anyone? Make, yeah, there's a couple of air rifle shotguns. Well, they're they're pretty budget. One. No, we'll have to get they one. They are pretty average. I'm looking forward to this competition. I think this is going to be a good one. And I think e each week we're going to come up with better, better comps. Well, who can be the most accurate from a prone rifle really just boils down to 
a or, bit of luck and some good palette selections. Yeah, it's... Uh, your yeah, one. Yeah, boring. Right. Let's make it fun. So, Let's mix it up. come on then, John Wayne Escape Suburbia. Let's, Let's go. go. This is a very silly competition, Ryan. It's a very silly competition, but I feel we've put enough effort into it for it to be good. But it's a little bit too close to practical shotgun for my liking. <laughs> it's slightly. I'm sort of giving pra away. Practical some, air gun. It's practical air gun. Practical John Wayne Escape Suburbia. Yeah. Right. I volunteered to go first. Let's get this over and done with. Let's do it. The course. Ammo, five yards from the start. Gun, three yards from the ammo. Target, 15, 20 yards from the first gun, the Barak HD 30 177. Shoot three shots at target, put gun back safely, straight up to John Wayne Central, mount the horse, turn over your shoulder, three blocks, quick as you can, full use of all the ammo in the gun. Full use of all the ammo, unlimited. Yeah, I mean, well, it's unlimited. I don't There's know how many put in. 15 in there, yeah, 15, 16. You've only got three targets to take down. Easily said. Easily Easy, said. Yeah. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Oh, there we go, three oh, yeah. pellets. Do not drop the pellets. Is it two shots or three? Excuse me, Sam. Bottom target, only my name on it. We have an impact. Three shots or two? I mean, it's hitting something. I wish I could zoom in, but that's against the rules. No alterations, like HFT. Hey. This is a wild, dangerous sport. Turn that the horse. Load the gun. Done. Four shots. Finished. One minute twenty forty-four. Woo! Alright. Gun safe for you. One minute twenty. That's the time to be. Eighty seconds. Can I do it? Probably. Do the it answer is indeed. not to fanny about with that gun too much. Just shoot. Just shoot. Go back! This target looks a long way away through that relatively budget scope. Uh, and it's zeroed clearly left of where it should be. But hey, he is suffering from exactly the same as I am. If he hits the centre, we'll know he's a bad shot or he's got better eyesight than me. But then he has to do it all quicker and hit those boxes under four shots. If it's very doable, you don't want to go first on a new course, do you? It's all about learning tactics. Hey, you can be brave. I'm ready. Okay. Born ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh, he's quick. He's agile for an old man. He's had his medicine. I had my cod liver oil this morning. I'm on it. He's in a rear rest. It's probably a bit easier. Oh, safety. Schoolboy. I'm trying to go too fast, I'm trying to go too fast. Yeah, well, speed, unfortunately, is not safe. Be safe, right? I'm trying to be safe, Johnny. I safe. don't like being beaten. Don't, don't, don't go slowly, I'm very No, not. Oh, you're doing well. We're a friend, we were saying earlier about springers being better. Safety. What is going on?
feel Johnny got me by at least 30 seconds. No. Surprisingly close. One minute 30.88. Oh. If I hadn't fumbled with the air rifle and missed two shots of that, that was fun. It was the hardest point of my day was not telling you the truth. However, it's all to play for on the accuracy oh. to seconds deducted challenge. Yeah. I'm well, bringing the cowboy, John. Seven, seven. Oh, are we giving that a seven? Three sevens, 21. And I've got seven and two sixes. I think we decided whatever way it was that I was going to win. No, we didn't decide that, did we? That was me. Was it a second per point? Was it? Yeah, second, let's do a second per point then. In which case, you still lost. Still lost, yeah. And then you probably get some points deducted for taking so many shots on those. Yeah, blocks. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, the rifle was malfunctioning a little bit. I think you. Was it? Ta no, no, it wasn't. It was me. I just missed it. First shot, dead on. Well, it second took me. two, missed. Yeah, well, that second one for me, I was like, bang. But luckily, I just caught. You know, you just catch enough just light catch, on the yeah, yeah. grass. It's right hand edge. I was like, Ooh, you cheeky little, little bugger. Hey, you little bugger. That was good fun. Whew. Practical air rifle, a new thing. No. Uh, impractical air rifle. Impractical air rifle, definitely. That should be the name of this series, actually, isn't it? <laughs> impractical air rifle. That's not a bad shout. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've been mildly entertained. Until the next time. Well, we just shot the rifle quickly at the target after we've done that little challenge, and I think any of us that managed to hit that bit of wood were incredibly lucky because it is all over the place. So I think the fact that we even managed to get anything was was a good achievement. And it was good fun, really There's good something fun. something about a bad workman here. I'm not blaming the tool. I'm not blaming <laughs> the tool because like any tool, you have to learn. You have to learn what it does and you have to learn to love it. And that was, that was the highlight of that little challenge was this little daisy. It was good fun. Well, it's a bit like shooting a real one, but quieter and cheaper. Quieter and a lot cheaper. And you can shoot it in your back garden if you've got a big enough back garden. Yeah, and you don't have to keep it in a gun cabinet. And considering we hadn't checked the um, zero in on the HW35. That did alright as well. That did alright as well. So I think that was a good challenge. And I think um, I'm going to have to do more of these little challenges. I quite like the, the competition. Like I said, shooting really nice guns at targets that are sensible is um, anyone's game. Yeah. At least I can win with crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Practical air gunning coming to a city near you soon. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This is where you say goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Take care.